Welcome back to Carolina Journal Radio. I'm Mitch Kokai. Facing an unexpected health emergency is bad enough. It gets worse if you end up facing an unexpected bill connected with your medical treatment, sometimes adding up to thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars. One person who's focusing attention on surprise medical billing is North Carolina's state treasurer, Dale Falwell, who joins us now. Welcome back to the program. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm sorry it's uh, on a subject that I know is important to your listeners because everyone I talk to has their own horror story about medical billing. Yeah, and this is something you had to deal with yourself. Tell us about how you had firsthand experience with this. Well, last year, uh, like many uh, other North Carolinians on the state health plan, went in for my annual physical, and uh, I live in Winston-Salem, and I came home about four or five weeks after I received a physical, and my wife was looking at a bill for $10. It was just $10. And uh, she said, do you know what this is for? And I said, well, I haven't had any medical attention this year except for this physical. And uh, so she starts to investigate. It's just for $10 now, Mitch. And uh, we end up calling the billing department of the hospital. And uh, the hospital said, well, it was for a doctor visit on a certain, certain day at a certain time, a certain place. And uh, I had a, the person on speaker, and, and my wife looked at the calendar. She said, well, that's the time and the place that he had his annual physical. And they said, yes, ma'am, that's correct. And she said, well, we already have a bill for the physical. What is this one for? <laughs> and the person said, well, somewhere in the conversation in the doctor's office, we can't tell which, but either your husband asked the doctor something or the doctor asked your husband something, <clears throat> that was outside the scope of a physical, and we have the uh, we have the ability to charge people for a separate office visit when someone asks a question outside a normal physical. And <clears throat> what I've learned since then is there's all these um, strange words that there's no way the average person would know what they meant. <laughs> That people are supposed to abide by, and whatever you do, don't get, don't, don't deviate from those words. Because if you do, you could be charged for a separate office visit while you're being charged for another office visit at the same time, at the same place, with the same doctor. And you mentioned the important piece of this, which is <clears throat> no normal person would know not to do this. This is only if you really have studied this and, and are expert on the, the ways of medical billing, isn't it? Exactly. And most people would just pay the $10 and move on with their life. But since my my wife knows uh, that you know we've been fighting this, this cartel-like billing uh, in the state health plan for the last two years, she, she decided to investigate. And it's an opportunity not only to applaud her, but applaud all the state employees and retirees. <clears throat> the answer to these questions rest in their hands and 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 that you get that by being a consumer of health care and we're trying to make it easier so that people can can uh, can know exactly what they're consuming for health care but what I forgot failed to mention it wasn't just ten dollars it was about a three hundred dollar charge to the state health plan that's the key component and when you look at what ate your pay raise and this is a big article that was in the New York Times a couple years ago <coughs> for public service workers. What ate your pay raise? What ate your cost of living adjustment? It's these issues associated with runaway health care costs. We are chatting with State Treasurer Dale Falwell. You mentioned that for you, had you let this go, would have been an extra $10 charge to you, $300 charge to the health plan. Multiply this by many, many people, and you're talking about a lot of billing that doesn't need to take place, right? Yes. Uh, between the health care, the prescription drugs, and the, and the pension, we're spending about $750 million every 30 days. Every 30 days? <clears throat> every 30 days at the treasurer's office. Not for health care and pharmaceutical benefits for all citizens, just for those on the state health plan. So this is a very serious concern. And, you know, anytime you want to solve a problem, the first thing you got to do is stop digging. And then secondly, it's a little bit like an ain't eating a ham biscuit. It's one bite at a time. It's one, it's one inquiry about a ten dollar charge uh, uh, per visit. And you know, that's all we've been trying to do at the treasurer's office the last three years is to push the power down to the consumer. You know, tomorrow for people my age, Mitch is a senior citizen day at Food Line. Thursday is senior citizen day at at Harris Teeter. 
you know, people know how to consume if you give them the tools to do so. And this is a this is a situation, and everybody uses the word nonpartisan. But let me tell you, if you watch every minute of the Democratic de- presidential debates, as I have, and and you hear what the president of the United States is saying about this, every person running for the presidency of the United States is talking about the necessity for transparent health care. And it probably ties back in, even though they don't quote him, to the most legendary investor of our lifetime, Warren Buffett, who employs hundreds of thousands of people who said that rising health care costs are the tapeworm on the U.S. economy. You mentioned that as treasurer you've been working on this issue. Remind us about the initiatives that you're working on to try to make sure that we get increased transparency and uh, fighting things like surprise Mm -hmm. billing. Well, what we've been trying to do is to go to the Clear Pricing Project, and I think your uh, listeners have seen this before, or viewers, more importantly. Uh, this is the uh, price list that was sent to me by UNC Healthcare when I asked them what I was getting for the $300 million that we spent for that with them in 2018. And for those who are uh, just listening and not seeing it, what you're see- <laughs> what he's showing me is a bunch of pages that are completely black because they don't show anything. This is supposed to be the master charge list of UNC Healthcare, 146 pages that are completely blacked out. And uh, as you said earlier, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take advantage of the buying power. You uh, referenced a couple times the state health plan. Let me put this in context. There are as many people, almost as many people in the state health plan than work for these three companies combined. Berkshire Hathaway, owned by Warren Buffett, J.P. Morgan, run by Jamie Dimon, and Amazon, run by Jeff Bezos. If you add up the number of people that domestically work for those three companies in the United States, that's about the size of the state health plan. And there's no reason on behalf of those teachers and those troopers, those that teach, those that protect, and those that otherwise serve, that we shouldn't be getting the benefit of that buying power for the benefit of those people who teach, protect, and serve. As we're speaking right now, where do things stand with this transparency effort and what needs to happen? Well, where it stands uh, nationally is, as I said earlier, every person running for the presidency of the United States is talking about this. I think uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren said recently that in the last debate that there are 37 million people in this country who went to the doctor and got a prescription that they could not afford to fill. So it's not just Senator Warren, but it's uh, Senator, uh, former Vice President Biden, Senator Saunders, President Trump. And so what's happening is is that, you know, those folks are talking about this on a national level, but what we're trying to do as Keeper of the Public Purse of North Carolina is we're trying to operationalize this. And just for your listeners um, um, to bring them up to speed, last year we offered the major hospitals in this state 100% profit nearly, 100% profit. Now, these are nonprofits. We offered them 100% profit. And they said, no, thank you. And so where we, what we do have, specific to your question, is we have 25,000 providers of health care who've said yes, who said, we don't want any more secret contracts. We're willing to tell people what stuff's going to cost when they come here. So we're pushing the power and partnering with those 25,000 providers, like ECU Physicians, like Trine Medical, which has nearly 140,000 lives in Mecklenburg County. So don't underestimate the power of 25,000 providers and the power of our 720,000 participants. And are you going to continue to try to push for the the rest of the health care providers to get on board at some point? Absolutely. But, you know, when when you're working with people who use cartel-like activities, and to remind your listeners, uh, anytime you want to make sure you have the correct meaning of a word, if you go to the Bible, the Constitution, or the Webster's Dictionary, you'll probably get straightened out. And Webster's Dictionary defines a cartel as an association which is formed to restrict competition and or raise prices. And that's exactly what we're experiencing with health care cost, surprise billing, out-of-network billing, and things of that nature. Well, someone who's going to continue to work on these issues in the months and years ahead is our state treasurer, Dale Falwell. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for the part that you play in getting this message out.